Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we will, we've got a few more seats in the front and we will we'll get some other chairs brought in, I think, because we, we've had a stronger turnout and it's wonderful. We're delighted to have you here, Foreign Minister. I, um, first of all, let me just say welcome and thank all of you for coming. I'm really delighted to have you here. This is an extremely important uh, event for us at CSIS. We have had the uh, honor and the privilege through uh, Ambassador Critt's good offices to be able to initiate a program here at CSIS on Southeast Asia. And I, was, I had the pleasure to speak briefly with, uh, with the Foreign Minister that, you know, in Washington for being such a you know, sophisticated and big town, and really we can't handle more than one or two things at a time in our imagination. And I said, I'm so glad that he came because uh, if he were not here, we wouldn't be thinking about all the important issues that are unfolding in Southeast Asia. So we need to have a periodically, uh, somebody of importance needs to come to Washington to get our head back in the game and to say there are a lot of other things going on in the world other than Iraq or Afghanistan. You know? And uh, we, we can't afford to let our focus become so myopic. And so I welcome you and thank you. I want to thank you, not just for coming to CSS, of course, but to thank you for coming to Washington so that we can re-engage with the world. So, Foreign Minister, we're delighted, we're very delighted that you're here. Uh, I had uh, the, the privilege for the first time in my life of uh, visiting Bangkok this summer. And it was a, it was a personal vacation. My wife and I, we, we have always we've seen the picture books of the Temple Complex downtown. It was just absolutely fabulous. It's just this wonderful, wonderful thing. We had a, a fabulous stay in Bangkok. And I learned today, Foreign Minister, this is your first visit to Washington, which uh, we can't offer the, the, the beauty and the glamour of Bangkok. Uh, we'll make up with it with having a lot of hustle and bustle. But we did remove all the protesters in your honor. <laughs> They were clogging the streets yesterday, and I told them we have to. They can be here one day, but they can't be here two. And so we were able to to clear them out so that you could get around. Uh, I, this, these are very important issues uh, in unfolding in Southeast Asia. Uh, some of them are uh, burned into our image and our minds. You know what's happened in Burma recently, what's been happening in Tibet, etc. Uh, and yet we. we it brings to mind the, the realization that there are very profound changes underway in this region, unbelievably profound changes. And it really does require an interchange with very thoughtful, sophisticated observers here for us to understand that and to appreciate it. And that's why I'm so grateful that you can come. Now, you've, you've come the same week that we can celebrate the fact that Tibet, uh, that Thailand and the United States have celebrated 175 years together. There aren't many countries that we can really say that. And it's, uh, now, we are, uh, we're still a young and energetic and growing civilization, and you are a proud and ancient civilization. So we, we come to this as a partnership where I hope we can benefit from each other. I hope we're wise enough to realize that if uh, we, the good Lord gave us two ears and one mouth, if we listened twice as much as we talked, we Americans would do better. And so I think that's what we'll do today. Derek Mitchell, my colleague, is the head of our Southeast Asia program, and I'm going to let him moderate the, uh, the discussion. The foreign minister is going to have prepared remarks, and then he is going to interact with all of you. And of course, the quality of any meeting is directly proportional to your involvement. So we'll turn it over to you later, but first we'll hear from the foreign minister. Sir, welcome. Delighted to have you in Washington. Dr. John J. Hamry, President and CEO of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish first of all to thank Dr. Hamry and the CSIS, CSIS for inviting me to address this distinguished gathering. I'm delighted to visit the United States and to be part of the CSIS New Southeast Asia Initiative, which bodes well, I believe, for the future of our relations. 
18 months ago, the military intervention or the so-called military coup that took place in Thailand cast doubt over the future of the kingdom's democracy and along with it, the prospect for deeper Thai-U.S. relations. Today, I stand before you here in Washington as the foreign minister of Thailand's newly elected government to tell our American friends a short but significant message. That is, Thailand is back on track. We are back as a vibrant, vibrant democracy, one based on respect for the rule of law, the will of the people, for individual and civil liberties, and for fundamental freedoms. We are back as an open, business-friendly economy, which is naturally integrating into the regional economy and link with the mainstream global economy in support of free enterprise and corporate good governance. Once again, Thailand is ready to work with the United States as partners in democracy as well as free and fair trade. No other occasion is more appropriate for me to deliver this message than today. For on this very day, Thailand and the United States celebrate 175 years of friendship and alliance. Also later this year, Thailand will assume the chairmanship of ASEAN July 2008 until December 2009, one and a half years. As chair or as new chairman of ASEAN, we will oversee the important transition period of Southeast Asia principal organization. It is the year that we expect that ASEAN, the, we expect ASEAN Charter to enter into force, which should be by the end of this year. This is that's a year for renewed hopes as well as for great opportunity. Renewed hopes that our democracy and economy will continue to flourish in partnership with the world's most well-known democracy and largest economy. And great opportunity in the growing dynamism of our reinvigorated bilateral relationship. I would like to touch about the changing political economic landscape of Southeast Asia a little bit. When the United States first began to have a military presence in Thailand in 1964 as an ally, Southeast Asia was regarded as a theater of the Cold War. As the Berlin Wall crumbled, along came globalization, the force that had, has realigned and redefined interstate relations. Political and military confrontation has become less important than economic integration. Accordingly, Southeast Asia has shifted its focus to economic integration and liberalization. We are witnessing the rise of China and then India and economically research in Japan. With it, East Asia has become a key engine in the global, global landscape with Southeast Asia as an integral part of it. Today, we also see more and more clearly another challenge that goes to the fundamentals of what we believe, a challenge of faith and values. The need for interfaith dialogue and cultural sensitivity has become increasingly important. America understands this reality well and seems to keep a step forward of others. You recognize the challenges brought by the changing global and regional landscape. The difference, however, lies in how we address them. We have ideals and ideas. The difference lies in how we approach them. The challenge is therefore how to work together more effectively to turn these changes into our gains. From a Thai and Southeast Asian perspective, I can say loud and clear that we regard you with high esteem as good allies should and that we stand ready to work with you. We welcome your continued engagement with our region because the United States is an Asia-Pacific power, a global leader, and a good, a good friend and ally to many in Southeast Asia. I only hope that 
you know us and understand us well, well enough to appreciate our role in this alliance and cooperation to benefit both our people. Ladies and gentlemen, at the regional level, ASEAN is also evolving and changing. Over the past 40 years, ASEAN has been quite successful in managing relations among its members, despite their multiple diversities, and quite successful, too, in passing through geopolitical and economic challenges. Yet ASEAN knows that it cannot afford to stand still. That is why it is now turning a new chapter in its evolution. With the ASEAN Charter, ASEAN will become a more rule-based, people-oriented organization while remaining outward-looking. ASEAN is on its way to becoming an ASEAN community by the year 2015. As the incoming ASEAN Chair, Thailand has a unique role to play in promoting ASEAN as an effective, action-oriented, and people-centered organization. An ASEAN that is better able to tackle issues affecting regional security and stability. An ASEAN that is outward-looking and capable of contributing more to the wider Asia-Pacific region. An ASEAN that is more integrated as a single market and production base, and an ASEAN that is more relevant for the ordinary people, in a sense, an ASEAN of its people, by its people, and for its people. On ASEAN relations with other partners, we have seen China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and India active, actively compete to strengthen ties with us with Southeast Asia. Symbolic of these efforts are the summit held between ASEAN and each of these countries, the annual summits of the ASEAN plus three countries, and the East ASEAN Summit, which also include Australia and New Zealand. ASEAN also held one summit with Russia and is planning to hold another one. In some, in the not too distant future, Southeast Asia will no longer be only a highly dynamic region with stability amidst diversity. Southeast Asia will be an engine for regional dynamism, a foundation for broader regional stability, and a model for regional integration. How then do we envisage the role of our long-time ally? As a global leader with whom we share many fundamental values and interests, the United States is an important partner of Southeast Asia, and we do and we do want to enhance our engagement with you. However, from our side of the pond, the United States has been sending mixed signals at times. The perceived lack of U.S. enthusiasm to lend a helping hand in the critical initial stages of the 1997 ASEAN financial crisis is one example, but one that is not easily forgotten and one that gave impetus to the invention of ASEAN plus three with high visibility for regional countries, particularly China. Contrast this with the immediate and overwhelming reaction of the United States to the tsunami of December 2004, the images of, U of U.S. personnel and assets working in tandem with Thai facilities and assets helping save life in Southeast Asia and beyond, also cannot and will not be forgotten. Soft power works. Its effectiveness and long-term appeal should not be underestimated. The, increasingly, the increasing economic ties and the reservoir of goodwill that comes with the assistance can affect the calculation of interest and influence perception and position. China is a good example of a country that has utilized this policy well, enabling it to make inroads into Southeast Asia. As friend and ally, I urge the United States to continue and enhance its engagement in our region. That's what I talked to Secretary of State Rice this afternoon. You can count on Thailand and you can count on our open arms. On the security front, 
the U.S. war on terrorism cannot be waged successfully without engaging the Southeast Asia that shares many values and determination with the U.S. Our partnership should not be measured simply by the number of terrorists or armed dealers we arrest or by the number of prevention initiatives or training courses we organize. Our partnership should go deeper and address the actual root cause that add fuel to terrorism. The differences in culture and faith as well as socioeconomic differences must be factored into our broader counter-terrorism strategy. Non-state actors have to be involved and taken into account. Let us not forget that Southeast Asia, in Southeast Asia, three major religions have managed to coexist peacefully and satisfactorily long before ASEAN was born in 1967. It reflects the region's embrace of the value of respect for diversity and tolerance. It is incumbent upon ASEAN member states to learn from it and build on it. Our region can become safer again and thus contributing to worldwide war on counterterrorism. On the economic front, the ASEAN-US enhanced partnership should continue to complement the ASEAN economic community to ensure that it will be inclusive and outward looking beyond Southeast Asia. The ASEAN-US Trade and Investment Framework, TIFA, should also be further enhanced. Nevertheless, as economic development is central to the region's future, we would like to see the United States invest in creating regional hubs for trade and manufacturing opportunities. We would like the United States to take advantage of the dynamic integration of ASEAN and the close friendship between Thailand and the U.S. The United States should also engage in education and economic development to create conditions more con conducive for people to adjust their norms and thinking. Ideologically, change needs to be driven by socioeconomic changes, and the lack of development in some areas should not be allowed to cloud the broader picture. As things now stand, we should be frank, the ASEAN-US partnership has been kept from developing to its full potential in no, small, in no small part by the issue of Myanmar. In fact, this issue has unfortunately even spilled over into the discussion on Thai-US relations. My question is, is this worth it for both of us? Ladies and gentlemen, Thailand and Myanmar are neighbors. Like it or not, we have no choice but to live next to each other. That is why I have made clear after taking office my intention to pursue what I call neighbor engagement with Myanmar as with all other neighbors. Simply put, we enjoy no luxury of distance, but saddle instead with the burden of proximity. With Myanmar, the reality, the reality is not only that many ordinary ties living along the, broader, the border depend on broader trade. Thailand also needs Myanmar's cooperation to tackle trans-border issues, such as drug trafficking, communicable diseases, displaced persons, and illegal labor. We believe that imposing sanctions or putting pressure would not work and will only hurt the victims of suppression or the target that sanction is intended to protect or help. On the contrary, I believe that through economic engagement, we help improve the livelihood of Myanmar people themselves through more jobs and income. I believe that through technical assistance, we can help them with institution and capacity building. I believe that through closer transportation networks of roads and rails, we can help Myanmar open up and link with others in the greater, greater Mekong sub-region and beyond. At the same time, as a friend, Thailand can give Myanmar neighborly advice, and as a friend, we will be in better position to persuade them to see the merit of democracy 
respect for human rights and the rule of law. In fact, during my Prime Minister visit to Myanmar last week, I conveyed to Myanmar the concerns of the international community, our wish to see continued momentum towards democratization and national reconciliation, the need for credible and inclusive referendum and election, and the importance of Myanmar's continued cooperation with the United Nations. As a first step, the Myanmar authorities have been receptive to our offer to share Thailand's experiences on holding a national referendum for the Constitution. Indeed, if Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines could be taken as examples, democratic change has to come from within and not from outside. Quietly, though slowly, we aim to turn this burden of proximity into a pragmatic opportunity for the sake of the people of Myanmar, our next door neighbor. I would like to touch, ladies and gentlemen, on the Thai-U.S. relations now and the future. On my part, I certainly would like to see Thailand and U.S. as a driving force for closer ASEAN-U.S. relations. Our relations have been built on the foundation of people who have stuck together through thick, thick and thin, in war and peace. As the United States' oldest ally in the region, Thailand is among the first countries in Southeast Asia to join the struggle against global terrorism with practical, concrete results. Thai police cooperate with U.S. authorities in arresting Mr. Hambali, a leading figure of the Jema Islamia in Thailand two years ago after the 9-11 incident. And just two weeks ago, the so-called merchant of death, Victor Bout, was arrested in Bangkok. We will spare no efforts in this endeavor against terrorism. Meanwhile, the United States remains our major trade partner. American business continue to have strong presence in Thailand and the region, with benefits flowing both ways. They are profitable, while our people gain, while our people gain from their investment and employment. However, we must also recognize that those generations of Americans and Thais who have experienced firsthand the mutual benefit of our alliance are gradually being replaced by new and younger generations. It is thus a challenge for us to revitalize this alliance and keep our bilateral ties a key part of the U.S. strategic focus in the region. This is why we strongly support the establishment of the Southeast Asia Initiative at the CSIS. The Thai-U.S. alliance is strong because it is built on mutual understanding and mutual trust. To maintain this strength, we want our academics and students to create new networks of dialogue and discourse, building on our long-standing friendship with new ideas to counter news and emerging challenges. I am therefore pleased to see eminent institutions such as the CSIS pay greater attention to real policy opportunities in Thailand and ASEAN. We stand to gain from closer security cooperation, from greater economic in interaction, and from further institu institutional development in ASEAN. Thailand and the United States can work together in new and creative ways to achieve these objectives through our unique alliance and partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Thai-U.S. Treaty of Am Amity and commerce was signed 175 years ago. It was done in four different languages, Thai, English, Portuguese, and Chinese. We had to rely on other languages to assist in the translation because then we barely knew one another's languages. We have come a long way since, but still, the words of our first treaty remain significant and relevant now as they were then. For with it, our two countries and people are committed to a friendship so long as heaven and earth shall endure. And that is long, a very long time indeed. On this day, the 20th of March 2008, the 175th anniversary of Thai-U.S. relations, and as we work together towards the future, 
based on mutual interest and shared core values. Even in different circumstances and changing landscape, let us continue to remind ourselves of these words and make it truly meaningful to these and future generations of Thais and Americans. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very, very much, Minister Nopadon, uh, for an eloquent and quite candid, I think, um, exploration of um, both the Thai-U.S. relations and Thai relations in the region and ASEAN as a whole. So we're very, very grateful for that exposition. I think it leaves a lot of space for questions, and we have a lot of time for questions as well. Uh, he, of course, is operating on Thai time, so he is, uh, so be somewhat gentle. He's about four in the morning for him. But uh, we will, let's go with questions, and he'll come up and answer, please. Uh, please wait for the microphone and name an affiliation when you do ask your question. Uh, Mr. Minister, Jim Wolf, Reuters. Yeah, please. Uh, further to your meeting with Secretary Rice, you said that uh, you told her that um, the United States can count on Thailand and uh, you can count on us with open arms. This was in response to uh, what kind of a request from Ms. Rice, if any. What did she ask you? What did you discuss? What did you tell her? Thank you. The speech was prepared before our meeting, actually. <laughs> That's my first answer. Secondly, we had a very fruitful discussion with her. She is very kind, very charming. I wish she can play piano for us. Yeah. Uh, we had a very fruitful discussion. We talk about our collaboration and cooperation. We are talking about Myanmar. We, I asked, I, I said to her that the USA has, has a greater role to play in Southeast Asia, and we talk about our personal issue, Thai Saudi Arabia relations. We hope that the U.S. will lend us a hand in normalizing our relations. We talk about our collaboration in arresting certain terrorists. Uh, in all, our relations are extremely good and very cordial. Did she request that Thailand send in troops to Iraq or Afghanistan? No. Uh, or, or contribute in any way to she, 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 have, she hasn't mentioned that issue yet. Dennis McNamara, Georgetown University. Uh, thank you for your uh, talk today. Um, I know the uh, FTA with uh, Japan was concluded recently, and i um, like to hear your reactions to that, uh, what you see as sort of the prospects for that FTA, and whether or not there is any possibility of moving towards an FTA with the United States. Thank you, Professor from Georgetown. I wish to study at your university sometime during my retirement. Uh, the JTEPA, the FTA with, with, uh, between Thailand and Japan, I think uh, will benefit both uh, countries. Although in Thailand there has been criticism, but it happens in democratic society. We think uh, we shall stick to the FTA, the JTEPA and make it work to the benefit of the peoples of Thailand and Japan. Regarding the FTA with the USA, uh, I understand the negotiation hasn't started yet. We have to uh, talk. We are a newly elected government. We will uh, discuss among the cabinet members whether we are going to go ahead with the FTA. But I understand the negotiation uh, stops for the time being. Please feel free to ask question. I'm yours. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I'm Lionel Rosenblatt of Refugees International. In 1975, the Thai and U.S. governments had a fine collaboration in uh, addressing the Indo-Chinese refugee exodus. It was really one of the great humanitarian accomplishments since World War II. Uh, there are some final chapters still to be written. You may be aware that there 
8,000 Hmong refugees in Pechabun, a smaller group in Dong Kai. I wanted to hear about the Thai Foreign Ministry's position, but also I know it's not just your ministry that uh, has uh, an interest in this, and the military and the NSC and even the Prime Minister's office have an involvement. So I wanted to ask about this and ask you to follow up on it, not to blot the final chapter in this great humanitarian accomplishment. Thank you so much. The final chapter is always exciting, isn't it? Yeah. When you read a novel. Um, Thailand have to endure or to receive about um, two million undocumented workers from Myanmar. We shelter about 160,000 uh, displaced people from Myanmar. There are about 7,800 monks in Pechabun and 152 in Nong Khai. Okay? Uh, I have to, to tell our honorable audience here is that the displaced people are not our own making. Because of some reason they moved to Thailand for fear of persecution or economic opportunities. We would love to cooperate with Laos and at the same time we would love to honor our international commitment under our international treaty. We will handle this issue very delicately. Uh, there would, I can assure you that there will be no forced repatriation, no forced repatriation. We have to thank uh, the American government that financially support the building of a bigger shelter in Nong Kai so that the 100 and 147 plus five, when I mean plus five, I mean their offspring, children, yeah, uh, that have a better quality of life with a, a large shelter. So to answer your question, um, we have put in place a screening process that's screening that screen in those who, who are economic migrants or who for some reason have been persecuted in the past and we will act accordingly. Thank you. Lex, Lex Riafal from the Brookings Institution. Uh, Mr. Minister, I'd like to return to the painful subject of Myanmar. Um, I, the, the evidence that sanctions are working is very, very small. Uh, your comment about democracy having to come from within, I think, is uh, very important. But what, uh, what troubles me is that as I see uh, Thailand's role in this process, I, I see a country that uh, doesn't seem to be really bothered by the suffering of the Myanmar people. And, and maybe in some respects is profiting from the instability and the turmoil there. And so I, I, I wonder how, how this perception can be changed. Uh, thank you so much for your question. I think you are entitled to, 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 your, to your comment. And in democrat, democratic society, we, sometimes we agree to disagree. But anyway, um, let's put it this way. We would love to see democracy in, in Myanmar. We don't want to host two million undocumented workers for, you know, in Thailand because of security matter, because of security concern. Uh, but the approach is a little bit different. I, I can hardly see, I can see that uh, the sanction hardly works. What should we do? If you impose more sanction, those who will suffer is ordinary people. Uh, we believe that by engaging with Myanmar, by encouraging them to change from within, or by engaging them on humanitarian front, we can help the ordinary Myanmar people or Burmese people. Uh, we are not the country who would steal their natural resources. What we would love to see the political development or the credible referendum to be held in May, inclusive one, uh, credible one. Uh, we, as a member of ASEAN, we really cannot interfere with our member states' internal affairs. 
there is a line that we cannot cross. But we will, as the new chairman of ASEAN, work actively, engage more actively with Myanmar. I do offer to share our experience regarding the holding of a referendum, as I just said in my speech. But we, I am pragmatist and optimist, and, uh, and optimist. I hope that one day there would be change in Myanmar. This is my belief. To add some point, we believe that India and China have important role to play in what you call convincing, persuading, or pressure, pressurizing Myanmar to change. I think India and China, even the United States, has a great role to play in that. At Center for Strategic and International Studies. I wonder if you could, if I could approach that problem from a slightly different way and ask you to think about where you see ASEAN going in the next 10 years and what role Thailand will play. Will ASEAN be a community of politically similar countries? Will it just have trade agreements, which is how it sort of started out? H how do you see ASEAN continuing? And if so, if it, if it becomes a, a more politically homogeneous place, how does that affect relations of the core five, original five countries with Vietnam, with Cambodia, and with Burma? Or Myanmar. Thank you, sir. Um, I am a doer, not a talker, actually. And I am a result-oriented man. So sometimes people are very frustrated about ASEAN. That some people say that it's just a talk shop or very loose alliance. Whatever you would have to label that organization, we think as the chairman of ASEAN and as after the entry into force of ASEAN Charter, sometime in January next year, we will have a stronger ASEAN, a rule-based ASEAN. And from that onwards, we can make ASEAN work for the benefit of ASEAN people. I'm sure uh, ASEAN free trade agreement with certain countries is under negotiation. And ASEAN will be a stronger organization and make ASEAN relevant to, to ordinary people in ASEAN. ASEAN pe uh, people center ASEAN, stronger ASEAN, outward looking ASEAN, action oriented ASEAN. I still have my hope in ASEAN. And as the chairman of ASEAN, we will do our best to achieve that goal. Hi, I'm Foster Klug. I work for the Associated Press. Um, the Bush administration has about a year left um, and, and hasn't seemed um, particularly interested in changing its my, Myanmar um, policy. What are you hoping or encouraging the Bush administration to do in the last year? And what do you hope for the next administration um, as far as that policy? Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah um, I don't want to interfere with the, <laughs> with the internal politics of the USA, but yeah. I wish that the USA would, would, would play a greater role or more active role in Southeast Asia. I would like to see the USA as the moral leader of the world, stand up for democracy when there is a coup around the world. I think the USA should, should take a stronger position regarding that issue. I would like to see the USA as taking a stronger position regarding climate change, Kyoto Protocol uh, has been brought into effect because of the ratification by a certain superpower, namely Russia, for example. I would like to see um, USA as the leader who is a champion for democracy and human rights around the world. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to touch or comment on internal politics, that the general view that, uh, that I think the USA should take. Uh, a few, yeah, I, I, I told her that uh, US, the US should uh, play a more active role in, in Southeast Asia and in ASEAN, for example.
Hello, Mr. Minister. I'm Kay Floyd. I work for the International Institute for Strategic Studies and quite heavily on the Asian Security Summit. I wanted to build on your uh, comments on ASEAN issues. You referenced several regional issues and, of course, maritime piracy, uh, trafficking, and all its, um, I guess, variations. Where do you see Thailand being able to take a leadership role on the numerous ASEAN issues that they're trying to have a, you know, a regional approach to? The, the institute under the ASEAN Charter, or what? Sorry. Oh, um, all the issues over the past that ASEAN has identified, whether it be trafficking or piracy or um, you know, arms deals, where can Thailand lead the ASEAN effort? Thank you. Um, actually, uh, we cooperate closely with the U.S. regarding uh, terrorism, as, as put in my speech that we arrested uh, a few terrorists. Uh, on piracy, maritime piracy, we cooperate closely with Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and Singapore regarding the patrol in the Strait of Malacca. We agree to, to take part in the patrol, but we need some money to finance uh, the, the operation. Uh, regarding what else, tourism, uh, drug, drug trafficking, we, the present government attach uh, great importance to drug trafficking. We uh, think the future of our younger generation, the future of our children, uh, should be bright without drug. So we, we announced the policy to our parliament to suppress drug trafficking. And there are channels of cooperation amongst ASEAN members. And after the entry into force of ASEAN Charter, we will have so a few more organizations that will deal with this issue. We will have a human rights body under ASEAN Charter, for example, let alone drug or other issue, social issues. We will deal with that very effectively after the entry into force of the Charter. But thank you for your observation. Thank you, Mr. Minister. My name is Naomi Steinberg, and I'm from the Southeast Asia Resource Action Center, and we seek to empower Americans with histories from Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. And if I may, I would like to return to the issue Mr. Rosenblatt raised a few minutes ago. I was very encouraged to hear your response in response to his question about the state of the Lao Mong in Thailand. I'm wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on the situation of those in the Nong Khai Detention Center and those in Pechaboon. For example, we know that those in Nong Khai have been recognized as refugees by UNHCR. So I was wondering if you could elaborate on what the plans are for perhaps their third country resettlement. And for those in Pechaboon who um, are found in need of international protection, what steps will be taken? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, regarding monks in Nong Khai, uh, the so-called 147 plus five, uh, they enjoy, uh, I understand the UNHCR issued the POC prisoner, uh, person of concern status, not, not refugee, yeah, but POC status. Uh, I can assure you that there will be no forced repatriation to, to Laos. And I did talk to the Laos, Kun Tong, Tong Lun, Laos foreign minister, that Laos, Laotian government positions is getting more flexible. We might, I hope that in the future, they might agree in the future. They might, I can't speak on their behalf, they might agree for the repatriation to the third country, that uh, Mong in Nong Kai. Regarding uh, situation in Pechaboon, about 7,800 monks, uh, we have put in place the screening process handled by our National Security Council, and I understand other ministries as well. We, we, will, we will follow up or monitor the result of the screening and, and act accordingly. In any case, I can assure you that Thailand will honor our international commitment and will not force people to be repatriated. I'm uh, Emma Chanlin Avery from the Congressional Research Service. Thank you for your comments. If I could, I'd like to ask you about um, Thailand's domestic politics and specifically about the role that former Prime Minister Thaksin 
plays in, in the current government. Do you think that he has a political future in Thailand? And do you think that um, Prime Minister Samak has asserted himself independently of Thaksin's position? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Thaksin uh, quit politics already. He will not re-enter political scene in Thailand or in the United Kingdom, <laughs> where he's the chairman of Manchester City Football Club. Uh, regarding Khun Samak, he is a real prime minister, the facto and the jury prime minister. Uh, Dr. Thaksin has never ordered or instructed Khun Samak to do anything. And if you know Khun Samak well, He's not the guy who will take any instruction lightly. Uh, regarding uh, uh, other political issues in Thailand, I think um, our government is quite stable and should be able to manage or to, to run our country for, for a few years. We hope to complete our four years term, but in politics, one day is too long. So I, I, I can't. I'm not a fortune teller. I can't predict my own future. Yeah. Yeah. But about Khun Thaksin, I can assure you that he, he has not been involved in day-to-day -day or even month-to-month -month politics. Paramis Warren from Ajahn France Press. Uh, Mr. Minister, could you please... Uh, highlight some of the priorities which Thailand would uh, uh, give when it takes over the chairmanship of ASEAN and how it would go about doing its duties as chairman when many within ASEAN itself feel that the ASEAN charter has got no teeth and uh, in fact some parliamentarians had also said from several countries that they would not endorse or ratify the charter how confident are you that this would take place. Thank you. With our teeth, we don't need a dentist. Do we? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to. Thailand is going to ratify the charter by, I think, by June. And Philippines is the, is the only country that quite reluctant to ratify. But I talked to Mr. Alberto. Uh, the foreign minister of Philippines, they hope that they can ratify uh, by the end of the year. Okay, Rat ratification shouldn't be any problem. Uh, there will be rule-based ASEAN and several organs or bodies to be set up under the, under the uh, new charter, such as the ASEAN human rights body, the ASEAN Human Rights Body and the Coordinated Coordinating Committee, Committee of Permanent Representatives. So many organizations that I don't want to bother you about. Uh, we will, you ask me how should we do or act as an ASEAN chairman. We will do our best in accordance with the charter and we will make it effective. For example, the Myanmar issue, we can discuss it under the ASEAN charter. Uh, during our foreign minister retreat, we can discuss very freely and frankly about the Myanmar issue. So we hope that having a stronger ASEAN, we should pass a resolution or we should come up with a concrete result in the context of ASEAN. That, that the hope that I have at the moment. Good afternoon, Foreign Minister Nopadon. My name is John Brand, and I'm with the Asia Foundation. Um, I agree with you about uh, the need for uh, India and China. I would even add Japan uh, in terms of calibrating the effort uh, with uh, trying to encourage change in Burma. But my question is, is that uh, with ASEAN, with Thailand as the chair, how might that be done? Uh, it doesn't seem that there has been a calibrated effort by all these countries. And I think as a consequence, uh, Burma, Myanmar has been allowed to continue in the way that uh, it has. Okay. 
Thank you for your question. Actually, I toy an idea with uh, Christopher Hill yesterday, and even today, with uh, your secretary Condoleezza Rice, regarding the six or seven parties talk. Depends on how many countries that you are going to invite. Uh, to solve um, the problem in Myanmar or Myanmar issue, we really need Indian and Chinese participation. I agree with you, Japanese participation should be encouraged as well. Uh, we can, we, Thailand used to offer a Bangkok process. I don't know whether you are familiar with that idea. I, I, a, a process or a forum that several countries come together to offer their views how to solve or how to encourage Myanmar to change. Only by dialogue and active engagement or participation that we can move or keep the momentum going or make Myanmar change uh, one way or the other. But we cannot interfere or we cannot use force or we cannot do more than as a friend or as a strategic partner or as a member of ASEAN. We hope that we, upon my return to Thailand, I will think about the strategy and come back and tell all friends, including Myanmar, including uh, India, and China and Japan and also the United States, how Thailand is going to play its role as Myanmar's next door neighbor to make change in Myanmar peacefully and democratically. Mr. Minister, thank you. Uh, Stephen Flanagan from CSIS. Could you share with us a bit your vision for the future of the U.S.-Thai alliance and how it fits uh, with also your thinking about the future of regional cooperation in Southeast Asia? Thank you. Yes, uh, the relations between, as I said, the relations, U.S.-Thai relations are extremely good, but the USA should not take Thailand for granted. Okay. Um, I think we could do more to co cooperate in other issues. Uh, and I'm sure there are ample opportunities for us to discuss in, in other forum and fora. Uh, I mentioned to, to Secretary Rice that the USA should play a greater role in, in that region, including cooperating with ASEAN more, more actively. Uh, the ARF, ASEAN Regional Forum, is working well in terms of security issues, as you mentioned. And the USA is a, a staunch member of this organ, organization. Uh, we still want to keep the EAC, is it? EAC? Yeah. yeah. But ASEAN would be a smaller uh, organization in a bigger picture. We, we still see the role of India in that part of the world to, to keep peace and bring peace and stability to that region. This is my general view. Uh, I think after the entry into force of the uh, ASEAN Charter, we, we can reassess the success, the success of ASEAN or the success of the Charter, and we can go from there. I wonder if I might assert the prerogative of the Chair to extend on that question uh, a bit. Um, on the issue of the U.S.-Thai military-to-military relationship, yeah. and on the day that uh, relations were reestablished with the new government coming in, the mill-to-mill -mill relationship was reestablished. But what is the vision? Is there? A, how do you view the mill-to-mill -mill relationship, and what is the potential there? Um, what is happening, and what do you? How do you think that can develop over time? Uh, the return of military assistance to Mil Thailand. Yeah, military to military relations and assistance and cooperation. Um, okay, the military uh, cooperation between USA and Thailand is extremely good. We send uh, several people to be educated in West Point or in military institution in the USA. Uh, the return of military assistance to, to Thailand after the formation of new government is well received by Thai people. The co COBRA, COBRA goal exercise, joint exercise, still going. It's very, very good. We still buy arms, lots of arms from, from USA. <laughs> we still have my F-16, for example. Yeah. Uh, and we, there, there shouldn't be any problem. Even, even, um, even after the coup, 
uh, the military of both sides still cooperate with our military system. I ask your forgiveness in advance for a rather direct question. Um, on the, the point you made about a six-party talk type of um, process, if all of the parties agree that there should be no interference in internal affairs of Burma, what would a six-party talk talk about? Uh, I'm Walter Lohman with Heritage Foundation. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, I, I think it depends how you define in, interference or pers I, I, dis I differentiate between interference and persuasion. In North, North Korea, for example, uh, have you, do you think if we continue to impose sanction on North Korea, it will work? I, I, I beg to disagree. I think by engaging, by talking, by opening a dialogue, by engagement, we will be able to come to a, a positive result only by, by talking or by negotiating, by persuading, that will, be, will produce some kind of result. I, I don't think in Myanmar situation you, you can force or you can uh, impose any terms upon Myanmar. After a few years of sanction, this, the junta in Myanmar still survive. Because of what? Because of certain countries are prepared to cooperate with Myanmar. So in that case, I think it would be, it's about time that we reassess the effectiveness of sanction and adopt a different approach to force change, democratic change in Myanmar. That, that, that's my personal view. Sir, we have, we have run yeah. out of time. Uh, you said that uh, you would not uh, tell Americans how to, how to deal with their internal okay. affairs. Americans are pretty good at doing that to others. Okay. <laughs> and we uh, expect that friends do tell friends um, straight talk. Yeah. And you have provided us straight talk today on a number of different issues, and we thank you for that. My first opportunity in Thailand was 20 years ago as a backpacker. I'm probably not the only one here whose first experience in Thailand was a backpacker. That was 20 years ago. Your first experience in Washington, I imagine you have not seen much of Washington. We welcome you back. We hope you can come back to CSIS. You have honored us today. Please join me in thanking the minister for.